Hello, and welcome back to Redirecting. I'm going to be talking about a statement that was made by Italy's Deputy Prime Minister. Um, he actually made a statement that uh, many of us have known for a very long time. He actually stated that France never stopped colonizing Africa. There's this ongoing debate between France and Italy right now between their leaders, and it's it's getting to the point where accusations are starting to uh, be hurled back and forth. Um, and a lot of it has something to do with the African immigration into uh, European nations. Now, uh, the Italian deputy prime minister, he um, he wants to blame France for being the reason as to why a lot of Africans are coming into European nations. And he blames it on the fact that there's a lot of... Um, you know, behind the scenes activity going on with the French. As as you know, Africa at one time was just divided up by all of these nations. And there is this illusion right now that many hold in their minds that Africa is now free and that they are now governing their own people and doing all of that. But uh, literally, they are puppets. The leaders of Africa are puppets that are still being controlled by outside nations. And, you know, a lot of people think that only China, you know, there's a lot of talk about China's uh, presence there in Africa on the African continent. But it's not just China, but these European nations, they still very much have a stronghold. Um, as a matter of fact, um, they were talking about how some of the European uh, currencies are still used within the continent um, of, of Africa as primary sources of um, currency. And so how can you really be a true governing nation of your own lands and your own people when much of your resources well, let me take that back. Not resources, because the real and true resources are what Africa holds and has in its possession. But the the money and and the uh, global connections and all of that in which uh, Western nations have tried to make it seem like they are actually the one with the resources when really they are not. Africa is the one that holds all of the resources, but they're putting forth their money and all this other stuff as if they are these European nations, but a lot of the the money and the financial um, establishments um, in Africa are from other nations where uh, they are running uh, major infrastructure there. They are building it, as a matter of fact, and that is the argument that a lot of um, Gentiles use uh, to say that um, Africa would still be in mud huts and uh, running around with spears and all of this if it weren't for them. So they, they use their insults to, you know, try to make it seem like Africans of their of their own can't do anything. Now, one thing that I want to say about all of this and all of the insults that uh, the African nations have received for a very long time, and I'm going to say um, black people in general around the world, we are constantly insulted by those who have not only colonized but have stripped the resources from our lands um, and also utilized our labor. So they're using not just um, our lands, whether it be on the continent of Africa or in what they call the Middle East today, that was um, part of our land as well, but they also use our bodies in many ways, okay? They've used our bodies to populate all of the mixed nations of the world. They've used our bodies for labor, you know, so many things we have been used for as indigenous people on this planet. And so it is, it's one of those things when you hear these conversations where you have two uh, Western countries battling each other and then they're saying, well, if it weren't for you, then this wouldn't be happening and that wouldn't be happening um, in reference to the African migration into European nations. And the fact that um, France is being uh, accused of colonizing Africa means that they all know. You see, France know that it's never stopped colonizing Africa. And 
Italy is calling them out on it, but Italy is not innocent by any means. It's just them calling each other out, saying, look, I know what you've been doing. Uh, we've all taken a part in it, and you are still very much a stronghold on the continent. That's pretty much what we are seeing and witnessing here, because they consider the African migration to be um, a huge problem for them. They feel like it's a huge problem for them, but they don't see any problems whatsoever when they are going into the continent, various regions of Africa, various countries and stripping uh, natural resources and using the people and just uh, being abusive in so many ways. And this is why countries or um, areas such as, you know, the Asian areas, uh, Asian leaders, you have those from China and India, who believe that they can just go into the continent and just do whatever they want. Uh, they are establishing their own strongholds. Africa has never stopped being colonized. When you really look at the deeper picture behind everything, a Africa has never stopped being colonized. Now, I look at what's going on in Zimbabwe right now and even South Africa. Uh, this is because these are nations that are trying to uh, redistribute land and do something that's positive um, for their own people. Now, um, I got a lot of information about Zimbabwe from a sister um, who um, used to be, who used to live in that area. Um, she's now in South Africa. But um, at some point, when I get a chance, she has given me permission to share this information. Um, just been kind of busy and um, my just pretty occupied with a lot of things right now. But a lot of information about Zimbabwe has been shared with me. And uh, there's another brother as well um, who has been there several times, have shared a lot of information about Zimbabwe, too. And so... Um, I'm going to share too, um, and, and a tip that we tried uh, to make in reference to Zimbabwe, um, maybe in a separate video at some time. Um, we hit literally a brick wall when trying to um, send some items to Zimbabwe. And um, I'll, I'll just put it to you like this. We'll share later in a separate video. But um, trying to send anything to our people on the continent um, it was 20 pounds. It was less than 20 pounds um, worth of, you know, items that we were trying to ship. And when they came back and said for each box, because it was two separate boxes and they were less than 20 pounds each, but it was 1500 They said between $1,000 and $1,500 each per box. So we, we were looking at between 2000 and um, three thousand dollars to ship two boxes to Zimbabwe, and I just thought that was ridiculous. And my mind was flooded with all kinds of thoughts as to what's happening. We know that there are these huge sanctions on Zimbabwe right now, and so we see how these nations play, how they play the game, how they've been able to successfully hold our people back for a very long time. Now, that's not to say that I don't believe that there are strategies that we as a people, we as so-called black people can put in place. I do believe that. But unfortunately, too many of our leaders are bought and paid for. So it makes it very difficult to try to achieve um, any type of independence, any type of real independence. Um, you see what happens um, in even areas like Haiti, it, they make it very difficult. They're like, okay, if you want to um, do business with Haiti or any of these other, we're going to make it difficult for you, you see. And so it is very disheartening to see how indigenous people are treated worldwide. Um, but we need to begin to form strategies and, you know, not so much about the complaining because that does nothing. Um, of course, it is good for us to speak on these things and highlight them for those who don't know, because many of our people don't realize that there are strongholds behind the scenes um, that are controlling things. Many of our people believe that, oh, if we go to this area, we're going to be uh, free from um, this type of rule. Oh, no. Oh, no. Many times, uh, as a matter of fact, the majority of the times your black leaders are still being controlled. So it doesn't matter um, if it's from behind the scenes. There's still that control mechanism in place. And this is why 
you'll see certain uprisings in Africa and you'll wonder, well, where did they where did they get all the weapons to do what they are doing? And that is because behind the scenes, the players are still the same. Um, they knew that they had to um, kind of do things a little differently than the way they were doing it before. Okay, you see how under apartheid it was very clear, but those still, still those same systems are still in place, right? But we have been led to believe that there's been some level of freedom achieved when re really it's not. They've just come up with a more cunning way to uh, have their way, do what they want to do, and have you think you're free at the same time. Um, anytime you can have a group of white children in a school in South Africa uh, still dominating the scene uh, from a few black students and uh, treating them, um, talking about on the continent, on the continent of Africa, having white students treating, or should I say white teachers, separating black students from white students and treating them differently. Anytime you can achieve something like that on your own continent, in your own country, in Africa, um, not that it's an achievement for black people. Let me, let me um, re-explain that. Anytime white people can achieve that, with the separation of white students from black students and still have the black students feeling like they are less than or not as smart or not as important. They're doing it on black soil. Then you know that there is still a stronghold there. That stronghold is still there. And we've been led to believe that uh, things are not the same. Okay. There may be the appearance of things not being the same, but it is. When you still have the, the majority of South African land, more than 80 or 90 percent still being owned by so-called white people or Euro Europeans, then nothing has changed much. Just a little bit, just enough to make you quiet down a bit. But everything is still the same. And so when I saw uh, that the prime minister of Italy said these things about France. Um, it is one of those things that didn't come as a surprise or a shock. It's just them fighting among each other, uh, battling back and forth about who has what and um, who's doing what, when in all actuality, they are both, they are both still the same, same um, people that they've been historically. Um, they are Europeans and they all have a mindset towards our people and they all see our people as a problem for their people or their lands, their lands being European lands. Um, so it is what it is. I just wanted to report on this, the fact that the prime minister stated that. And, you know, it is what it is. And we as a people have got to learn how to navigate through all of this, whether you're living on the continent or whether you're living abroad. We've got to learn how to navigate through all of this garbage. I don't know what else to call it. Someone um, said that we should stop calling it white supremacy. I agree to you. I agree with you to a certain degree. OK, it's not that we are calling it white supremacy um, as something believing that they are supreme. It's just that that is a mindset that they hold. They have a white supremacist mindset. And that is why we speak on these things in that way, because that is terminology that most people are familiar with. We, when we start changing it up, then a lot of people say, well, what does she mean by um, Euro supremacy? Some people don't even know. I mean, I remember I said, uh, I asked a person a question years ago, more than 15 years ago. We were living in Michigan. And um, I asked... Um, a relative of mine, I said, is your is your girlfriend European? Because she's white, right? And uh, he was like, uh, no, what, what's European? And I'm not trying to insult um, the young man. I'm just saying that he really didn't know what European was. So when we use certain terminologies, it's not that we are trying to um, say that they are supreme. It's just that we are using the terminology that most are familiar with, okay? And not confusing those who are not familiar with those terminologies. But um, anyway, I uh, just wanted to share this story with you. And um, of course, as always, our eyes are always on Africa because a lot of our people are there. 
Okay, a lot of our people are there. The majority of our people are there, as a matter of fact. Um, we are the ones who have been um, sent abroad. Okay, and so we are always eyeing what's going on on the continent because that is of concern to us. Um, we don't like what they're doing to our people in Africa no more than we like what they're doing to us in the various lands that we've been sent to. Okay, um, of course, there has been this friction created between um, Africans and those in the diaspora. There has been this intentional friction that has been created by the same people who are pulling the strings behind the scenes. Okay, but we've got to learn how to get beyond that. But guess what? It's not going to be done because we decide on our own. Many of us are trying to decide, okay, we can do this. But if you remember the prophecy in Ezekiel 37 and many other areas of scripture, um, the prophecy states that the Most High himself is going to bring the two sticks back together. So um, it's going to come at a time when he says so. And that togetherness is not just going to be uh, me saying hi to my sister Alice in Kenya or my sister Edina in South Africa. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be in mass and it's going to be very recognizable and it's going to be like some divine family reunion that we could never achieve on our own. Okay. Of course, there is love going back and forth um, between many of us in the diaspora and those on the continent. There is a lot of love going back and forth, but it's not where it's going to be when the Most High does it. When He does it, it's going to be magnificent. It's going to be a beautiful thing. And it's going to be, like many have stated, a great family reunion, unlike the world has ever seen. Okay? All right, family, I think I am done with this topic for the moment. And with that, I will say shalom. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel. And also, comment, share, like and subscribe.